Hey y'all, hopefully we've got an easy one today. This is a Fender Baseman 300 Pro, also known as the Sun Model 300T. So Fender had purchased the Sun name and they had also released this amp as a Sun. Uh, not sure why exactly they rebranded it or whatever, but either way, it's a great amp. I really like it. I think this should be a quick fix. Uh, from what I understand, the power was turned on and the mains fuse blew. Uh, so I have a, they said there was a spark uh, that they could see on one of the power tubes. So maybe one of the output tubes had a short in it. Before we just randomly throw new tubes in it, let's pull those out, put them on the tester, make sure there's no other underlying causes of that short, and then we'll throw some new tubes in there, rebias, and it should be good to go. This is not the be all end all of tube testing. It just, it does, detect obvious faults. This performs what we call an emissions test. I'm not going to get into the science or technicality of how this works. Just wanted to show you guys something. That if you can see the meter here, when I push this test button, this this thing goes off the scale in the good range. You would think that would be good, right? So if I take this one out, this is the third tube in line. Now if I go back to the second tube that was in line. And before you test any of it, you want to make sure the heaters are somewhat full. You won't get a great reading. I mean, this one just goes bad. So I don't have an obvious short in the tube yet, but that could change, you know, once the tube is actually energized and has current going through it. Now, this one did creep up but it still stayed in the lower bad section, the questionable section. So I don't think this one's any good. It's like I've got to hold it down and it, that needle barely creeps up. I'll, let it, I'll even let it sit for a minute. I'm going to grab another tube. It still goes up, but it should... It shouldn't be like that. It should be a lot. See, again, it doesn't take long for this thing to warm up at all. And I hit this switch, bam, and it just jumps up. Pretty good. So I definitely believe that that tube is Bach. Putting some marks on these tubes so I know where they where they came from. I guess that this one seems like it's testing fine. Yeah. And again, just give it a second to warm up. Goes right up. I think this one's probably okay too. And something interesting all of these are Fender labeled uh, groove tubes. I believe Fender actually purchased the groove tubes company as well. These are all Sovtech tubes, uh, great tubes by the way. And uh, here we have a JJ6550 that was in there as well. So that would tell me that there was another tube problem previously. At this point, I don't really care if they're good or bad. I'm not really going to salvage any. I'm going to possibly keep a couple around as testers. You know, we do want to put a match set. In that place so uh, I have another sextet of match 6550s that are Sobtex as well and we will pop those in there and bias everything up again I think this tube is good as well so we'll just go ahead and turn this off we'll leave that guy in there let's get back to the amp now so to bias this guy we're gonna need to take this cover off here All right, so to bias the amp, you're going to want your two probes in the one that's marked bias. That says 80 millivolts. It's kind of funny because the manual for this says 100. All right, let's get a load connected, and then we can uh, fire this thing up. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn everything on. So far, so good. Looks like we've got three lights right there. I have no idea what that means. I should warm up a little bit more before we take 
or accurate reading, but I just want to flip standby. Just make sure nothing blows up. Our meter is saying we got about negative 72 volts here, or 72 millivolts actually, which is good. It, it's this, the instructions actually say 100, but 80 millivolts is written right here. So I'm going to stick with the number that's written on the amplifier. Let's see here. Okay, it's right there at 80. So let's go ahead and check this balance. And, and the instructions for the balance say you want you want a zero volt difference there. That's very sensitive. Zero zero point one. That is crazy. It's the 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 adjustment on that is so fine once you get down to there. And you know that's possibly going to drift, you know, as soon as you get to a different power source or something like that. So I wouldn't probably worry too much about that. Let's check our bias again. We're right at about negative 79 millivolts. They're specking for 80. I'd say that's damn good. You know, we can we'll let it sit for a minute and we'll try for uh, we'll try for exactly at 80. But I don't think that's that's a big deal. I mean, we're less than less than a millivolt away from our target number. So uh, I'm going to grab a bass and uh, just check that part out, make sure it plays and sounds like it's supposed to. So far so good. Amp sounding all right. Bias is holding really, really steady. Um, so like I said, we, we let it warm up for a second. I'm going to see if I can just tap that right at 80 millivolts. 0.1 and the amp sounds. It's just buzzing because I'm so close to it. If I turn around, for that one it sounded good uh, I don't notice any other problems with it the preamp tubes could probably stand to be changed now but it, it honestly it sounds fine so I don't really see any reason we really need to right now pretty much three 12 ax sevens and one 12 AT7 I'm guessing maybe that's the phase inverter or a driver stage haven't seen the schematics for this amp I'm gonna ask them if they want to pop some new tubes in but that's easy enough to do on the fly as well so we don't really have to be in the shop to change out preamp tubes so anyway, sounds great. I want to get this back to the owner because they're in a studio right now recording a record. So I'm sure they're dying to have this back. So hopefully that'll help you out if you have one of these amps and you ever have to bias it to go over what we just did. The mains fuse blew. Uh, they said they saw a spark in one of the tubes. So we immediately think we've got a power tube issue. We tested all the tubes. One of them tested pretty weak. I'm guessing that's the one that had a failure in it. And one of the tubes was also replaced at some point in time. So we could tell that there was a tube problem before. They're all pretty old. They're Fender branded tubes. They're original to the amp. So it's time to swap them out. So we've got a sextet of new Softec 6550s in there, biased up to 80 millivolts, just like it says on the back of the amplifier. Sounding great. So let's get it boxed up. All right, so for fun, we did put new preamp tubes in it. I got a JJ uh, ECC82 of 12AT7 in the position where it's specified and the rest of them are Softec 12AX7WAs. 
Uh, don't notice a huge difference in tone. Sounded good before, still sounds good now. We just wanted to make sure that this thing was stable before it goes back. And uh, I am going to include the old preamp tubes with the return of this amplifier because I don't think they're terrible. They might be a little worn, but uh, they sound fine. So anyway. <laughs> It's a 215 cab over there. It's pushed up against the wall, so it probably doesn't sound that great through the camera. But the amp sounds awesome. So I can't wait to hear it on record. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.